Ever since I was a kid, I've lived for stories, whether it was a classic film on TV or exploring new worlds in my backyard. But now that I'm older, 22 years old, in Plymouth, New Hampshire, as an interdisciplinary studies major studying filmmaking, I started wondering why we as human beings find stories so fascinating. I didn't have a concrete answer, so I decided to ask my professors here at Plymouth State University and see what they could tell me. Stories are the first form of art that ever existed. Even before someone draw, drew a picture, even in caves, I think stories were probably first. From little kids all the way up to uh, the cosmos, somehow stories seem to be uh, crucially important. Uh, it's hard to imagine a life without stories. I suspect it's got something to do with a, a vicarious thrill where we are allowed to explore the unknown or the marvelous. Um, through means that, that, so we don't have to actually go there. We can actually watch other people doing it, we can hear about them, and we can put ourselves vicariously into their position. So I think that's a lot of it. I thought about it, I had a couple of ideas, and then I realized, oh my God, it's probably one of the most important questions anybody can ever ask anybody. You know, you can imagine life without TV, uh, or movies, or, or, or operas, but uh, you go to the, any uh, culture, the most primitive culture in the world, stories are the rock bed of their their life. History of mankind or humankind is, we only know it through story and through art. And remember, I think story is a basis of, of art. It's amazing to think that that fundamental piece of what we are, your question, story, is everything that we are. It's everything that we've ever been and it's everything that we could ever be. And it's so simple and it's so fundamentally natural that it's actually not obvious. It's almost, it's one of those things that's just too simple to see. Everyone's life is a story. So when they see a story or hear another person's story, they can relate a little bit of their life to it and relate to it in a sense that they are someone else that experienced maybe a little bit what they experienced and they're not in this whole world alone even though we're all together. And so I think that stories are just a main focus in anyone's life and anyone that's interested in knowing more about a subject, more about a topic. It's where you find your information. When talking with Leah, the director of Domino Effect, I asked her about her new film. Well, it's kind of about uh, a young man's struggle with prescription medication. And, and for me, growing up in, I grew up in a city, and it, drugs were always around in every kid's life. Mostly, if you weren't doing it, you knew a couple of kids that were doing it. And, and I knew many kids that did and made wrong decisions with different types of drugs and, and not able to actually pull their life together. But this is a story about someone that fell down that path and was able to be given that second chance to pull himself out of a life that would just lead of death and destruction in the end. And it's just a story that I think a lot of kids can relate to that have been in the same situation or know people that were in the situation. Just kind of saying that there is hope on the other side that that even though you're in this life now that you can get out of it and I think it's just it's a positive story but it's also a sad story because I mean a lot of things do happen within it that lead up to him having to make this life change to finally get himself on the right path so it's a positive positive story. <laughs> it's always a bit of a mystery to us um, that stories can help they can help us explore different things and so on novels films when people do tell stories and they find out that someone else has experienced it, that it'll give them more hope as well that, you know, maybe there is a better life out there than what I have. It's, it seems like a, a human impulse, something that, that's in our bones, in our DNA, to, to, to tell ourselves stories and to be reassured by stories. I think the reassuring is as much as, as anything. I think that media does play a huge role in, in changing behavior and influencing generally teens and youth more than anyone else. Our production company is a socially conscious producing organization. We will make a story if we don't believe before we do it that it will move the world forward at some level. It's about the message that you send and the message that we're giving out to the younger generations that they need to stay positive and they need to show change rather than destruction and violence and sex and drugs. They need to show the world in a better light and I feel like a lot of general television and, and popular film won't show that but if they go into the more independent or if they start watching documentaries or not just regular MTV or VH1 
it's much more effective to show it in the course of a film. If I show a film like Woody Allen's Crimes and Misdemeanors, and we see a person caught in a dilemma who violates, I think we figured four or five or more of the Ten Commandments, which is one of the kind of warm-up topics we talk about, you can see it, you can feel it, and, and understand it, and almost feel yourself saying, I could see myself making those wrong choices, maybe. Um, um, or maybe not, you know, how would, I, how would I deal with the same situation? I mean, you'll be able to see a change being cultivated through the masses from media because it is a powerful tool that we have, especially now in the rise of technology. I think they're an enormous force. I think uh, we, we tell ourselves, I mean, politics is just one big story, right? I mean, uh, obviously it is. Religion, from my point of view, is one big story. There are the various things. They're in books often. Um, they tell conflicting stories sometimes. Sometimes they tell stories that are complementary. Um, so I think they're enormously important. I think they actually can change the way we, um, the way we view the world. That is why culture exists. That is what art is. It creates what culture is. And culture is really a synthesis of stories. It's where you can learn things or hear about new things. It's, I don't know, it's what life gives us, I guess. I mean, we will always have stories as long as there's time. And I don't mean to be too metaphysical about that, but as long as there's a sequence, as long as things come in sequential order, we always want to know, and then, and then, and then, what happened next, and what happened next, and what happened next. You can strip away the music, you can strip away the visuals, and if you're left with only story, you can still be okay. Even you, I mean, you are a collection of stories. I think that's probably your most valuable asset, is that you have this history. You know where you've been and what you've done. The guy on the skateboard, he's got stories, <laughs> you know? I know he's got stories. There are stories around making this video right now, whether that sound was working. It's all story. It's everything that we own. There really isn't anything else, frankly. So it seems there's no escaping them. Stories make up our entire existence and define who we are. They're both familiar, yet still mysterious, that we can't nail them down. It's the human element that connects us to story. We, humanity, are a story, and each of us have our own stories. Stories walk past us every day. All you have to do is really look for them. <laughs>